Hi, I'm Stuart, Stuart Lane. I uh, work for a company called Trade Nation. Um, we, we are retail, forex, uh, and CFD providers. Um, work in an industry with lots and lots of competitors. Um, I've worked in this weird and wonderful industry for 34 years now um, and uh, seen a lot of changes over the time. Um, Trade Nation's been going for, for around eight years. Uh, we did work under a different brand name. Previously, we used to be called Core Spreads, but for the last few years, we've been working under Trade Nation. Growing the market or growing our business significantly over the last few years. Um, we have offices in London where we employ uh, 68 people now, I think it is. Uh, we've got offices in um, Sydney, uh, down in Johannesburg, uh, over in Malaysia and we are uh, currently setting up offices in Portugal uh, and looking at other license opportunities in Seychelles and we have a license in Bahamas as well, so uh, a pretty global business. So yeah, well, I think we were a little bit lost with regards to, to how to do sales in this, uh, in this particular sector. Um, there's a lot, of, uh, a lot of businesses that are uh, aggressively selling, um, maybe not in our sector, but we, you know, we're aware, we get cold calls, all of us every day, don't we? Um, and I was really determined not to fall into that trap and not to end up with a business that I look back on and felt, yeah, okay, we might have been reasonably successful, but we haven't done things in the way that we wanted to. It was very important for us to, to find the right fit. So we met a couple of people, um, and as I was introduced to, to, to Jim, luckily through uh, somebody who worked here, who uh, had previously worked with him. And that's always a great thing. When you get personal recommendation, um, let's face it, we can all go through Google and you know, search for a, a sales mentor or who can help me with my sales. You can meet some very, very convincing people um, who are you know, uh, promoting on YouTube or wherever it might be. Um, I think it's about finding that right fit for your company. So, you know, we didn't rush into things with Jim, we spent time. Uh, I like the fact that my first two conversations were just very much about me and about me as the business and what I like to do and what I like to, to see uh, in terms of people and culture. And that for me set us on the right path. And I knew from that moment that, yeah, he was the right person to work with us. And the fact that he's been with us for so many years, um, you know, is, is, you know, absolute, uh, you know, I think just demonstrates how, uh, how that relationship has grown. And it has grown. It has been a very uh, good relationship. It's been two-way relationship. Jim comes to me with lots of ideas. He is an ideas machine, um, which is fantastic. And he's never hurt or never upset if it's an idea that doesn't quite sit. But the great thing is, is because you get so many ideas, and most of them are pretty good, most of them are pretty spot on, um, it just gives you opportunities to diversify how you're going to do things, to change uh, your line of, uh, of approach with customers. Um, and again, you know, we talk about retention. So often we as a business, we uh, delight in the number of new leads coming in and new business coming in. Uh, what are we doing to retain the customers? And he never lost sight of the importance of making sure the product works for the customer. Uh, how are we working to make sure that uh, our product delights our customers? Um, and that's always good because you're always pushing, you're always looking for new ways of, of doing things. Um, the one thing I would say over the last four years, uh, or five years with, with Jim is nothing's really stayed the same. Um, we've always tried to improve how we do things. Yeah, there's been some winning formulas, but we've improved on those formulas. It's very easy just to become quite complacent and to sit there and put your feet up and go, that's it, I've got that cracked. Well, the market changes, particularly over COVID. The last two years or two or three years, the way that customers engage has changed dramatically. The way that we engage with products and, and businesses now has changed dramatically. And I think that that has really helped us. We, we could have been caught a little bit flat-footed, um, but we weren't because it was Jim saying, well, okay, how does this change things? People are not coming into London anymore, not traveling into cities anymore. What are they doing? They're spending more time at home. So how are we going to engage with these people when they're at home? They're, they're surfing more, they're, 
um, you know, browsing more, they're, they're finding different ways to engage with content. How are we going to adapt to that? And that was, uh, for me, you know, made a, made a big difference because it meant that we didn't just sit there and go, okay, you know, 2020 was a phenomenal year for all brokers. Um, people had lots of time on their hands, everybody started trading. And it was very easy just to sit there and go, oh, that's it, we've got this sussed. But then the market changed again and the way customer behavior changed again. And a really good mentor, sales consultant, somebody that's gonna help you grow your business, understands and sees the changing, uh, the changes in the market. You know, TikTok, new thing. Uh, you know, the different platforms that people use, how do they engage with content? And what do they want to see? Is it short content? Is it long content? Do they want a long conversation? Do they want a short conversation? And it's knowing how your customer is going to react um, or respond best to uh, your approach. Um, and that's a skill. That's a skill and, and Jim has it. Yeah, I think, I think if you're one, if you're starting out, um, as we were, um, absolutely recommend Jim wholeheartedly for putting that plan together, building your team, training your team most importantly, um, and really then nurturing that team going forward. If you've got an existing team but you're struggling with conversion, you're struggling with, um, with, with, with converting leads, uh, with engaging with customers, again, recommend Jim because he'll look at things differently. He'll, he'll listen to what you're doing at the moment, listen to the types of calls, types of emails you're sending, um, and really dig deeper into, okay, your product's good, so why is it not resonating with customers? Again, very, very strong area uh, for Jim to, you know, to, to work on. And retention. I would say retention is a key area as well. If your, your churn rate of customers is too high, if it's something that concerns you that you're constantly having to fill that sales funnel because there's too many customers dropping out the bottom, again, Jim is somebody who can come in, look at the business, look at where it's going wrong. Clearly, you've got a product that people like because they're engaging with it. You're filling that sales funnel, that top of funnel. But why are so many people dropping out the bottom? Again, something that Jim does very well, has a look at that business, uh, looks at maybe who is in charge of looking after those clients, how are you looking after those clients, how are you engaging with them, how are you just checking in and making sure that this is still a product for their needs. And if it isn't, okay, how can I help you? Uh, and again, Jim has fantastic talent in that area and yeah, 100% recommend him. So I first, uh, first met Jim, um, well, it must be five years ago now, um, and uh, was introduced to him by actually a, another member of staff who, who knows him very well. Um, and we got talking and we talked about the challenges around sales. It was an area of the business that I was always a little unsure. Um, we'd never really been very successful in that, in that area. And I loved his approach. I loved his energy that he brought um, and we very quickly hit it off. And yeah, we began, began working five years ago. Um, he came in to really help us try and uh, establish a sales team, to establish a process as to how we were going to work. Um, I was a little bit skeptical, I have to say, about, about sales in general. Um, but Jim changed my attitude towards that. He showed me how things could be done, how things could be done in a way um, that that really sat well with the, the, the message of what we were trying to do as a company. Trade Nation were trying to do something different. Um, it's a very crowded marketplace. There's lots of people competing uh, for uh, the same clients that we, we are trying to, to win. So how were we gonna do that? How were we gonna do something that was different to everybody else? And that's what I loved about Jim. Um, sitting down and talking to him, he came up with a different approach, different ideas. Um, different way of, of, of thinking about how do we sell. Um, and that word sell didn't sit well with me, to be honest, because in this industry in particular, um, you're not hard selling. We don't push the product onto people. Um, people are interested and are engaged in the, the services that we offer. So how do we then engage with them? How do we create that um, that relationship with the customer. Uh, and that was so very important. And Jim got that from, from day one. He understood what we were trying to do and that really helped 
me um, work with him and really helped us uh, form a, a really good partnership and it's been very strong ever since. Um, his knowledge and understanding of the market, of what drives people, how you engage with people, how you build those relationships, how do you build trust. You know, so very important when you've got lots of brands to choose from, lots of opportunity. How do you create that trust with that individual that makes them uh, feel like you're the right place for their business? Because let's face it, there's a lot of choice out there. Yeah, I think that, you know, that was one of the key areas for me was how do we train people? How did we train people to engage with customers in the way that we want them to? Um, and the great thing about Jim was that he listened. He listened to what we wanted as a business. It wasn't just a, this is how I do things, therefore this is how you're going to do things. He understood what we were trying to create in terms of a, uh, a business um, and uh, you know, a culture within a business. Very important, that word culture, very important to, to what we do. Um, so yes, he, he, he brought, uh, put together a, a plan for how we were going to go to market how we were going to recruit people. I didn't really have a clue, to be honest with you, you know, other than the, the usual uh, go to a job agency or scour LinkedIn. And it really worked because Jim was at the, the heart of our recruitment process in making sure that we got the right person. Of course, you, know, you never know until somebody started with you, but I had a lot of confidence that the people that we were getting through the door, and he spent a lot of time, I mean a lot of time, uh, traveling around the country, meeting with people. We went and had a workshop in Derby uh, where we had um, four of our sales team get together and we spent two days, or he spent two days. I flew in for a quick flying visit and just to say hello to everybody, but he spent two full days just going through uh, how, how we were going to work as a team. Those four individuals are still with us. That was three years ago now. Um, and we're, it's paying dividends, it really is. Um, so much so that we're looking to roll out more of what he's done, but globally. Um, different challenges around the world, uh, culturally, you have to understand the type of market that you're working in. Um, but again, I think he, he understands that and he's got the great ability to listen. Listen to what a business needs, adapt his knowledge that he's got over many, many years of experience, and then apply that to the needs of a business. And that's really where I felt the difference was uh, with working with Jim. Yeah, again, it was a, it's, it's, it's a tricky area uh, of the business or it's a tricky area of business in general, sponsorship, marketing. Um, how do you get your brand recognized and uh, seen in the marketplace? How do you get people uh, sitting there saying, oh yes, I've heard of you and, and recognizing your brand. Well, uh, Jim worked closely um, and helped us work with Somerset Cricket Club and Essex Cricket Club. Somerset predominantly. Um, when we started uh, working with Jim, Jim said, well, okay, well, we need to find somewhere where we can get some exposure. Now, of course, you can go to a, a Manchester City or a Liverpool football club or Real Madrid, as some of our competitors do. Phenomenally expensive. We didn't have that budget. Um, but what he did is he worked hard to find the right fit for us as a business. Again, a business with a uh, similar culture, similar approach to how they run their business. Somerset Cricket Club are phenomenally well run. A wonderful family uh, run uh, cricket club but who have reach uh, you know, through social media. They have a social media reach that far uh, outweighs or, or, or the, the, their, their budget, if you like, or their standing in the world of sport. Phenomenal reach around the globe. So Jim saw this as an opportunity. So he introduced us to their uh, chief exec, Gordon, and we struck up a really good relationship. We built that relationship. Again, it wasn't just a, here's a check, we want to sponsor you and walk away. It was all about being proactive, always about what can we do together as a partnership. It's very easy with sponsorship, you just pay them a check and you put your name on a shirt and you walk away. That's not what Somerset was all about. Somerset was all about, okay, we've done the deal, it was really good value, but how can we now get the most out of it? And we did that through in-grounding uh, activations, we called them. Um, this is where Jim and members of the team would go along and we'd um, hand out caps or we would do 
some, some bowling games or just engage with the crowd. And the crowd loved it, they warmed to it. Um, and I think when you've got something like that and the energy that he brings, you just, it becomes infectious. And having that energy alongside a very energetic crowd because they were already energized because they were here, there to see their team Somerset. Um, I think it's, it really opened our eyes to opportunities within sports sponsorship. It doesn't necessarily have to be that big ticket that you automatically think, well, I've got to reach you know, deep into the pocket here to sponsor a Liverpool or a Man City. There are so many opportunities to do so. He introduced an ambassador um, idea. This was working with individuals in sport. So our mantra in Trade Nation is there are no shortcuts to success. And it's very much where Jim came from as well. If you want to be successful, you've got to work hard. You know, nobody's going to give it to you on a plate. And with trading, when you come to, to learn how to trade, there are no shortcuts. You've got to work at it. So he looked at opportunities working with individual sports people. Um, and we worked with some, still work with some fantastic sportsmen and women who have worked hard to achieve success. So it was a really nice tie in. We had a, a cricket club, which had a great culture. And then we had ambassadors that worked alongside us and still have ambassadors working alongside us. And we still sponsor Sp uh, Somerset, by the way. Um, and it all just worked with how we were then putting together our sales approach. It gave our sales people things to talk about. Um, let's face it, none of us like getting pitched as soon as we pick up a phone. Um, you know, within our sector, I hear it time and time again, people reading off a script. Yes, it's always good to have pointers and ideas as to how you want to, to, to structure a conversation. And it was always about structure with, with Jim. How do we structure a conversation? And that quite often would take you into different directions, but it's always having something to talk about. Um, you know, you're talking to, to people that have been at the game at Somerset. Well, let's talk about the game. You don't have to shove a product down someone's throat to start with. Um, you know, we all switch off so very quickly when that first opening line is, uh, have you ever thought about life insurance? Well, I'm sure you have, but it's not really where I wanted to start the conversation. Um, and that I think that we've really learned how to structure our conversations with both existing customers, um, because retaining customers is important as well as establishing new, new business but also how you start, start those conversations with people that have yet to engage with you as a business. Um, so yeah, or, during the whole time of all of the sponsorship that we did, it was all part of a plan. It wasn't just a random, well, let's do this and try that. Everything was uh, put together as part of a, okay, these are the touch points we will have in terms of people getting to see our brand. Uh, how do we then follow that up with good structured conversations that are engaging, that build that trust and build that confidence in that brand that we've seen? How do I describe James's energy? Um, not wanting to, to drop a brand in here, but he's a Duracell bunny. He just keeps going. Um, nothing is too much trouble for Jim. He uh, has been incredibly supportive for me as a CEO. Um, you know, quite often when you work with third parties, you have a, you have a deal with them, uh, you have a certain allotted number of hours, and that's basically what you get. With Jim, he was there day or night when I wanted to, to have a question, pick up the phone, uh, and I loved that support. And that made me uh, feel more confident in the plans that we were putting together. Um, but yeah, that energy is, uh, is contagious because you put someone like that in a room when, when I did the sales training uh, with him, just seeing the look on those faces of four people who had previously worked in call centers. I think they've been beaten down a little bit by just that constant pressure that they were under. And they were now seeing a different way of structuring calls, a different way of engaging with customers. And you could see there was a, a light that came on. So yeah, that energy, spreads through the business and yeah it's uh, he's, a, he's a great character to be around uh, a good person to be around who really cares about what he's doing and how your business is doing he wants to he wants to see results you know it's very easy for somebody just to say well you've got to put this in place uh, and then disappear off into the sunset jim is very much about well did it work 
okay, it didn't work quite as well as we, we'd hoped. How do we change things, right? Let's tweak this, we'll change it, and then we'll go again. Let's measure the results. It was very much about measuring the results of how uh, our work was, was, was being received. Doesn't work every time. He knows that, I know that. Come back to no shortcuts to success. Of course there aren't. You've got to keep working at this and there will be trial and error. The thing I liked about Jim was it was very much led by what were the results of that? How can we make that change? What can we change? Sometimes it was very small changes. Sometimes very small changes can make a huge difference. You, how, you, how you greet a client, how your opening line is, uh, how you close a conversation. All of these things um, we, we worked on. And yeah, it was that energy that just was, uh, okay, we're not giving up, you know, let's, let's try again. Just because it didn't work quite as we'd hoped, uh, just meant it was an opportunity to, to try something a little different. And that energy, because of you've got that, that confidence for somebody that's delivering that, you end up with a, a team who are very willing and eager to try different things. They don't become that browbeaten, downhearted, oh, well, you know, it's not working. There was always that person that was like, okay, come on then, right, didn't work this time. What are we going to change? What are we going to tweak? And let's go again. Sales culture, I think we were struggling. We were struggling to really find our position in the market from a sales point of view. I'd seen and still see a lot of bad practice in the market. Um, a lot of people who really are just churning through the numbers, churning through the calls without really uh, caring what the results are. They're just onto the next call, put the ticks in the box. I've made that call, I've made my allocated 50 calls a day, whatever it might be. Um, and that was a culture that I was concerned about going into. To be honest, we didn't really have much of a sales presence before Jim arrived. He saw that as an opportunity, but he also understood my concerns about going headlong into that sort of hard sell type culture that was prevalent in other areas of the sector. So now we have a, I, I love it. I think it's fantastic. Um, when you work in a highly regulated environment such as ours, uh, so we're regulated around the world by FCA and ASIC in Australia and um, you know, regulators across the globe, it's important that you have confidence and trust that people are saying things and doing things in the right way. And because of the way that he set things out from the beginning, I have every confidence. It's not something that keeps me up at night, it doesn't worry me, uh, and that's important. You know, when you've got that confidence in your team that they're doing things in the right way, um, it's a great place to, you know, to, to, to build from. So the culture we have in our, in our team now is, is, is great. They're very collaborative with each other. We don't have this um, eat what you kill mentality that you see sometimes in, and is known within our industry, within the trading industry. Crikey, we've all seen those horrible films of, you know, uh, the, the, the boiler room type sales environments and I'm aware it happens in other industries. We've got somebody working with us that used to work in the telecoms industry and it was phenomenally cutthroat. So we don't have that type of, of, of culture within the business. A lot of that does come down to the type of people you employ. And again, it comes back to your plan. It comes back to working with Jim to better understand or for him to better understand what type of person are you looking for here? What's the type of person that's going to help you grow your business in the way that you want to grow it? I think uh, as a CEO, it was very much around have a plan and have a plan in place. It, was, it would have been very easy at a time where we were eager for growth. Crikey, which CEO isn't eager for growth? but it would have been easy to run and rush headlong into something. I think what he uh, brought and, and, and helped me with was a, there's a sense of urgency. There's always a sense of urgency about Jim. He's always a doer, he gets things done. But he was also, okay, well, let's just pause, take a breath here, look at what you're trying to achieve and let's put that plan together and then execute that plan. And I think that the temptation would have been for me to try and copy what some of the others were doing because you hear about, oh, they're being ever successful over there, what they're doing, they, they must have the, the magic formula. There isn't a magic formula. Uh, it's about, again, about hard work. So yeah, Jim brought that 
to me to just have that peace of mind or that presence of mind to sit there and go, okay, what are we trying to achieve here? How are we gonna get to that goal? And most importantly, how are we gonna measure our success? Um, so yeah, and just having that, that, that you know, ear to listen um, when things were maybe a little bit tough, um, but also to celebrate the wins. It's important that you, you know, I don't think we do that in business quite enough. We don't celebrate the, 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 the wins and the victories. Um, and I think I've learned a lot from him to, you know, to do just that and, and take a moment to celebrate those, uh, those victories that you've got and, and the successes, um, but also be able to adapt quickly to when you are uh, not quite on the right path. Um, well, it's a glowing endorsement of, of the work that he does. Um, would highly recommend his services. Uh, he, as I say, he has a different approach to a lot of people that I've worked with um, and the energy and the experience that he brings. He's a very, very knowledgeable uh, person who's worked in this, uh, this field for a long time. But what I do like is his ability to, um, to adapt and adapt some of his learnings and his knowledge to the industry or the company that he's working for. So it's not one dimensional, it's not a one size fits all. Uh, he's not gonna ram it down your throat. Um, he will work with you. And I think that that is as, as a, a strong endorsement as I can make because uh, for me, that's, that's half the battle.